And further evidence of this, look at the photos of Ethan Crumbly people on social media and some media outlets are using. He's now 15, and yet they chose this angelic-looking photo from about when he was 10. What is the purpose of this when there are several other photos, like his mugshot, that could have been shown instead? This same sort of tactic is used in reverse against black perpetrators and even victims. Rather than use their school photo of them smiling and looking like good kids, they use the meanest looking, most aggressive photo they can find on social media to portray them as villains. They attempt to portray them as people who either obviously would commit the heinous crime they did or victims who deserved it. So, unlike many YouTubers who live in the LA or Seattle area, we're in the vague Midwest, right? That's, that's it. And occasionally some weird shit happens in the Midwest. Trigger warnings for um, psychopathy, uh, let's see here, homicidal thoughts. School shooting. It's just School shooting and, and everything, everything connected to that. Yeah. Oh, and incre incredibly bad parenting, but we'll get to that. So... Here's what happened. Ethan Crumbly, a kid from Michigan, decided to go to his school with a handgun and proceeded to, I believe it was, kill four people and injure several more. We're not going to go into the specific details. Because I, I don't want to. This person's victims were Madison Baldwin, Hannah St. Julian, Tate Meir, and Justin Schilling. Ages ranged between 14 and 17. What we need to have a conversation about is this kid was clearly showing signs of very real psychopathy. And I'm not going to pull the conservative thing of like, oh, this kid's dealing with mental illness. He was. But he still should be punished for all of this. And that goes along with my ideas of rehabilitative justice. I don't think somebody this far gone can truly rehabilitate. We can try to make them comfortable. We can try to make, keep them away from the rest of society. But the idea that we can rehab rehabilitate them, they have to be cognizant enough to get that. And when you hear some of this stuff, you're going to understand where I'm coming from with this. We're not trying to do the conservative meme. We have to talk about this as real mental health issues and what happens when incredibly neglectful parents hand their child a weapon that should have been respected. Now, I'm not going to make any secrets here. I'm not going to make any secrets here. I own a firearm. We own a pistol. We bought it right around the election. And the reason we did that was because we were concerned about our safety should Trump basically get rid of the rule of law. So what we ended up doing was purchasing a firearm. I am a gun owner. I, for the longest time, did not believe in guns. I thought guns were awful. I still don't like guns, but I own one because I live in a country that wants people like me dead. So we're going to go through a timeline of what happened, and then we'll talk more about it. Sound good? Cool. Please take care of yourselves if this is too much. All right? I'm sorry to hear that. Def uh, defense traitor. I can't yeah. pronounce that name. Sorry. Defense and nest traitor. I can't. Defend. I did. Sorry. So... This part of this timeline kicks in after this kid's parents were entering their pleas on a Zoom hearing. Their bond was set at $500,000, and you're going to see why these parents have been also arrested. That's true, they do, but they're also useful terms to describe very real uh, horrible behavior. So we have to be careful how we use them. I don't use them in this stream very often, nor do I use them flippantly. But when someone shows an utter, utter lack of care for human life, no, I think I'm going to use the terms. 
to be abundantly clear. So, this kid, Ethan Crumbly, has been charged with murder and other crimes in Tuesday's mass shooting in Oxford Township. About 30 miles, 50 kilometers north of Detroit. Here's a timeline of the events that happened in the rampage. No, it can also be a habit of mental illness. That's why we have conduct disorders. I'm not going to let this get stun locked, Chessburster, but again, violence can be sub through many sources, and hate and anger can come about through mental illness. This is not to say that we should treat the mentally ill wrong. That's never been something we've supported on this channel. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that, again, certain types of disorders can lead people to be violent. I've dealt with them myself. It's not fun, and it's not great to see someone out of control, but it does happen. And rather than anybody taking this kid aside and actually dealing with the situation, they didn't. They even went so far as to try to bury it or arm him, as you'll see. Let's move on. Friday, November 26, James Crumbly buys a 9mm 6 hour from Acme Shooting Goods in Oxford, according to Oakley Co Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald. His 15-year-old son, Ethan, was uh, later posted a photo on Instagram of him holding the semi-automatic handgun. Just got my new beauty today, 6 hour 9 millimeter. Any questions I will answer? He included an emoji of a smiley face with hearts. On, on Saturday, November 27th, Jennifer Crumbly writes on social media that it is a mom and son day testing out his new, birth his new Christmas present, the prosecutor says. On Monday, November 29th, a teacher sees Ethan, a sophomore at Oxford High, searching online for ammunition with his cell phone during class and reports it to school officials. McDonald says, Ethan meets with a school counselor and another staff member. He says he and his mother recently went shooting ra to the shooting range and that shooting sports are a family hobby, according to Oxford Community School Superintendent Tim Throne. So already we're seeing school neglect. School personnel called his mom, leaving her a voicemail and, email, and emailing her. She did not respond. While exchanging text messages with her son, she writes, Lol, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught. That night, Ethan Crumbly records a video in which he discusses killing students, according to the sheriff, Lieutenant Tim Willis. Tuesday, November 30th, a teacher finds a note on Ethan's desk that alarms her enough to take a photo. The prosecutor says, it includes a drawing of a handgun and the words, the thoughts won't stop, help me, also depicting a bullet with where the words blood everywhere above a person who appears to be have shot twice and bleeding. A laughing emoji is drawn below the figure. The note also says my life is useless and the world is dead. The teacher reports the information to the school counselor and the dean. Okay, well, at least someone did something. A counselor removes Ethan from cla his classroom and takes him to the office with his, bat with his backpack. The counselor obtains the drawing, but Ethan has already scratched out the portions, or scratched out portions. He says the drawing is part of a video game he is designing, and that he wants a career as a video game designer, the superintendent says. The parents are summoned to the school for a meeting that occurs around 10 a.m. While the school tries to reach them, Ethan remains in the office for an hour and a half as counselors continue to observe and speak with him, Thorne says, or Throne says. Ethan expressed concerns about missing homework assignments and asks for his science homework which he, wor he, he works on while waiting. The counselors do not believe that he will harm others based on his behavior, demeanor, or responses, according to the superintendent. With that note, kids should have been kicked off campus immediately and immediately asked to go see, like, see a counselor before he could return. Um, that's how that should ha happen. That kid should absolutely be, be not allowed back in class until you have some mental health person actually sign off on this. I'm sorry, I've had to do these sign-offs? Like, no. The parents... Arrive, uh, arrive and are shown the note. The counselor asks Ethan about his potential for self-harm and harming others. They again conclude he is not a risk due to his answers, which are affirmed by the parents. The parents are advised that they are required to get him counseling within 48 hours or the school will contact Child Protective Services. They should have contacted them immediately and they also should... Uh, oh my god. So those school counselors are, by definition, mandated reporters as most state as 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 far as I understand the laws in most states, and mandated reporters are required by licensure in every state in the United States, to my knowledge, 
to file with Child Protective Services, even if you've already given a warning like this. That should have happened immediately. Also, within 48 hours, should have still kicked him out of class. They refused a request to take their son home for the day and leave, leave, leave without him, apparently to return to work, Throne says. So they left him at school. He returns to the classroom rather than go home to an empty house, which the superintendent says is because he had no prior disciplinary infractions. About 12.51, Ethan emerges from a bathroom with a gun his father bought four days before. He fires at students in the hallway, killing four and wounding six students and one teacher. Does deputies capture him within minutes of the shooting? When news of an active shooter becomes public, Jennifer Crumbly texts her son at 1.22 p.m., Ethan, don't do it. Fifteen minutes later, at 1.37 p.m., Je James Crumbly calls 911 to report that his gun is missing from his house, and he believes his son may be the shooter. The gun has been kept unlocked in a drawer in the parents' bedroom. McDonald says, so again, you don't keep guns like this. You keep guns in proper lock boxes. This is insanity. And there should have been no reason why this kid could access both the firearm and the and bullets. The you keep them separate. Yeah. Like, this is really, really basic stuff. Wednesday, December 1st, Ethan is charged as an adult for murder and terrorism. Friday, December 3rd, James and Jennifer Crumbly are charged with involuntary manslaughter. Authorities cannot find them and a manhunt is lodged. Saturday, December 4th, the Crumleys are arrested around 1.30 a.m. after being caught hiding in a commercial building in Detroit. They enter not guilty pleas in a Zoom meeting, and the judge sets the bond at 500000 The superintendent announces there will be a third-party review of all the events in the past week because the co community and families deserve a full, transparent account of what occurred. So here is what appears to be a candlelight vigil. If we come back over here, we have... Ethan Crumbly, five facts you need to know. Basically talking about, again, these parents did nothing. They bought a gun on Black Friday and left it in an open place for a mentally ill kid. And I'm going to be really clear here. The fact that this kid was clearly dealing with really, really clear issues of mental health and the parents did nothing up until then, should have been a CPS call in and of itself. No kid just escalates to drawing pictures like that. I'm going to be real clear here. Okay, so that is true for Michigan. Good to know. Um, so, again, here's the thing. If you look online right now, you find pictures of Ethan Crumbly. The news did this really weird thing where they kept showing him as this, like, they posted a picture from when he was, like, a child, like, praying Like, praying, praying like he was a little nine-year-old baboo. And the problem is, is that that's not the kid that did the shooting. This kid is. I don't normally talk about people's appearance, but I swear to God, that kid looks like an incel. Like, again, he, it just, just 4chan for days. So, again, their parents bought a gun. They did not lock it up. Yes, and teachers and schools administrators are usually mandated reporters as well. This was a failure at every level. Not just for this kid who did this, but all the kids that he harmed. Well, what really gets me too is like, how many of you fucks are going through, are going through trainings for this stuff? Like, and none of that included, no, really, here's the steps you should actually be taking. That include, you know, the things I just talked about earlier. Like, what are we doing here? Like, this this isn't... Like, all of that training must be useful for something, but clearly not the actual situation you would hope it would be useful for. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Crumbly being held as a juvenile in hours after the shooting while McDonald reviewed the case. The Detroit News and other news outlets did not initially name the suspect, but referenced an article, an archive article leading to his identification, which McDonald confirmed. In 2017 article, a local newspaper, the boy appears as a bespectacled fifth grader at an international baccalaureate school. That's the picture we were just talking about. So let's be clear. Here's the things you need to know. Crumbly made threats on social media and in a journal indicating he planned the shooting, authorities said. Crumbly was denied bail at his arraignment. Oh. Crumbly was denied bail at his arraignment Wednesday evening and judge Nancy T. Carter agreed to transfer Crumbly to the Oakland County Children's Village, 
a juvenile detention facility to the county jail. Oh, from that to the county jail. Nice. He will be separated from adults at the jail, officials said. That's probably for the best. Part, yeah, I mean, yeah, part of the course, so. Crumbly sat quietly through the arraignment, slightly hunched with his hands in his lap. He wore a mask, an anti-suicide smock, and told the judge he understood his charges and his rights. He entered a plea of not guilty through his defense attorney, Scott Kovac. Kovac did not contest the request of the assistant prosecuting attorney, Marquise, to deny bail in this case. Keese told the judge he watched the surveillance footage of the shoot, uh, from the shooting, which showed Crumbly enter a bathroom with a backpack leave, and leave with a gun. Keese said Crumbly methodically and deliberately aiming the gun, aimed the gun at students, pointing the gun inside classrooms and at students who hadn't had the opportunity to, to escape. What's depicted on the video? Honestly, judge, I don't have words to describe how horrific it was. So this wasn't a kid just losing his shit. This was a kid methodically planning this out. So Danny, they, them ask, can you give some insight on what kind of training a mandated reporter gets? There isn't any training. It's a legal requirement. If you are a mandated reporter in your state, the legal requirement is if you have the suspicion of any type of abuse, physical, mental, emotional, sexual, doesn't matter. You are legally compelled to contact CPS and file a grievance immediately. Now, whether they follow up on it or not, that's, there's a huge amount of questions there. But the simple fact of the matter is what mandated reporter means is you don't get training. It's just part of your schooling. And they tell you this. If you have suspicion, not if you have proof, not if you have like a fucking photo ID showing what happened. If you suspect it, you call immediately. Yeah, even vague suspicions doesn't matter. I've had to call on on things that were basically things I knew didn't necessarily didn't necessarily amount to abuse, but because they were suspect they, but there was a potential they could be and there was suspicion, I had to call. This is a requirement of every type of therapist to my knowledge. It is a requirement of as someone said in chat and I thought this was the case, teachers and school administrators, each and every one of these people should have contacted CPS. The fact that it was used as a threat is not how that is. You do it regardless of what the kid says. You do it regardless of what the parents say. You are legally compelled. And basically, and this is the thing I'm going to say, every single motherfucker in that office, every con counselor, every teacher, anyone there who let that kid go back without a CPS call and let him back into the school, every one of them should lose their licensing or any credentialing that allows them to do their job. Those people failed. And we have numerous kids injured and four dead because these people couldn't do their job. Uh, yeah. And to be clear, every single person working with students, I believe, as to how that writes it up, is a mandated reporter. If you work with youth in any capacity, you're basically a mandated reporter. Okay. Like, that's just how that is. Doesn't matter where you are. So, yeah, no, they all should have been able to actually, like, make this call. Let me explain what actually should have happened. Here's the order of operations that should have happened. The moment this kid showed this kind of issue, these kind of mental health issues, what should have happened immediately is this kid should have been sent to the office. The parents should have been forced to take him home. They don't get a choice in this. And they would have to get a signed letter or note from a mental health professional showing that he was sound of mind and going to do no harm. That's what should have happened. And CPS still should have been notified by any one of the administrators there. This is a failure at a monumental scale. These teachers, these administrators, these counselors are neglectful. Oh, and the parents absolutely should get criminal charges. If I had, I am not a lawyer. I can't say that for sure, but we'll get to them in a minute. Oh, they got criminal charges. That That is happening. Yeah. Yeah. So... Do, 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 where we get to this. So let's, let's kind of zoom into the important stuff. Because I figure if any of you, you know, want to look up some of this stuff, read the details by all means. Two, Crumbly was featured in a local newspaper as a fifth grader for a project of poverty and hunger. So again, these pictures were used showing him as a kid back in like, what was it, 2017? This was the picture that was shown. Because this is what they always do. If a shooter is someone white, they go to the mental ill defense and they show them as this wonderful angel. But if it's a person of color, they're a terrorist and basically, you know, are shown as in their in their worst possible situation. Usually their mugshot 
where they look like they, they look like a criminal. No one doesn't look like a criminal in an orange jumpsuit. We saw him above. Like he looks he looks like a kid that should be kept away from like women and children. I'm just saying. Like anyway, so again, the fact that this was handled this way is insanity because it basically tried to frame this kid as some poor child, but in reality, no, this is a kid that was clearly having issues for a long time. And I'll use that term again. These are the words of somebody either being incredibly edgy or dealing with very real psychopathy. I know people don't always like that term. I don't give a shit. You don't say that everything is dead and you plan on doing stuff like this and you tell me that person's mentally sound, but that mental illness doesn't invalidate the terrorism. This is still terrorism. Crumbly was a member of a middle-class family with married parents who both worked. Okay, that's useful information. And again, this kid, this kid again, wasn't in poverty. This kid should have been in a situation where he was treated in the best way humanly possible. Again, yeah, I know that he was looking for ammunition on his cell phone, but thank you, defense. I appreciate it. And again, I'm not saying this necessarily is a thing to say middle class better. They're not. I grew up in poverty. Fuck the middle class. And honestly, fuck me for being in them. Um, the fact is, is that there is evidence to show that, again, the more you are, the more likely you are to be towards violence. Again, society kind of creates that and poverty is just generally a way that inflicts harm and causes crime. This kid had no reason to do this to our knowledge. None. None. This is insanity. Four, school officials met with Crumbly the day before the shooting and the morning of the shooting for concerning behavior, which we talked about. Ethan Crumbly was struggling in school in 2016. His mom wrote a blog. A blog. She wrote, you see, Mr. Trump, I need you to stop Common Core. My son struggles daily and the teachers tell me they hate teaching it, but have to. Their pay depends on these stupid test scores. I have to pay for a tutor. Why? Because I can't figure out fourth grade math. I used to be good at math. I can't afford a tutor. It, in fact, I sacrifice car insurance to make sure my son gets a good education and hopefully succeeds in life. My parents teach at a school where their kids come from illegal immigrant parents. Most of their parents are locked up. They don't care about learning or threaten to kill um, my mom for caring about their grades. Do you realize, Mr. Trump, that they get free tutors, free tablets from the, our government so they can succeed? Why can't my son get those things? Do we have hardware? Do do we have his hardware? He must not deserve that too. Holy shit! She did diet racism. She wow. did. She did the diet racism joke, guys. Guys, seriously, like she did it. She did the. She did the meme. It's, you know, affirmative action lets those people get into college, but what about my kids? What? 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 First off, I don't even know what school she's talking about. Second off, how do you know they're illegal immigrants? Three or third? How do you know they're in jail? Also, have you considered your kid is just dumb? Or you're dumb too? I don't know. You just reach out to the school and be like, help. How do I figure this stuff out for my kid? Help. Like, just, you you can spend your time complaining. Like, I, I get clearly. it if the school, yeah, I can get it if the school was incompetent, right? But like, like, again, why did we have to, man, we just jumped to illegal immigrants. I'm actually genuinely oh, surprised. These no, people are is, dicks. This is a trip. This is a trip with a whole lot of issues. And so, again, we go into this. The fact is, is like, you know, various people giving their sound offs. But let's let's be clear. You know, we went through this. Sorry, I wasn't on screen. We were going through these. There's five. There's four, etc. But the thing you guys got to understand about this is. This could have been stopped. This could have been prevented. This could have been dealt with. It wasn't. It was a massive failure. First and foremost, by parents who didn't give a shit. Parents who knew their kid was mentally ill. You don't send a, a, a tweet to, you don't send a message to a kid saying, don't do it. You knew how bad it was. Now, people are going to say this doesn't actually align with our views on rehabilitation. And I'm going to say this very clearly. To rehabilitate, you have to want to. Now, do I think these people deserve like the death penalty or anything like that? Not at all. I don't believe in the death penalty. I don't like the idea of the state having that power. They already do it with cops. But I think these people should be kept away from the rest of society because they actively act as a harm to it. Right? 
rehabilitation may look different depending on each individual case, I think is the other thing to realize. Absolutely. You can only rehabilitate, you know, to where that person's ability is at, at that time. The, and if, yeah. I think the only person that didn't fuck up kind of was the teacher who took a picture, but the teacher also should have. So well, I can so tell that, that teacher. It's a weird one. Cause that teacher did follow the training and did go, Hey, like I got this to the counselor, to the person who needs to get this kid now. Like they, they did get it to the right party, but shit fell apart. Well, and the thing I got to beg the question on here is that just real quick, I've been in situations like this. Let me give you an example. I worked for a clinic where there was a person that came in. This person was a client and they had mentioned that there was the possibility of child, child abuse in the form of sexual abuse. I immediately asked my supervisor, Hey, I got to contact CPS. And I was shut down. The funny story about this is actually how I lost my first internship when I was finishing my degree. I was actually kicked off my internship site and fired because I wanted to contact CPS about a potential case of sexual abuse. The place that I worked, which I won't name, obviously, was run by a lady with way too many degrees, just so many doctorates. But the joke being is, is that she was incredibly unethical. She didn't want to have any harm come here. She didn't want anyone to sue because this is literally how some people think this stuff works. Like, I can imagine if this teacher reported this, expecting that someone would do something about it. Chain of command's been met, you'll assume someone else will do it. But if the administration stopped it down, if any single person, a vice principal, principal, counselor said we don't need to, that person at that moment just poisoned the well and made it so everyone think this is not that big of a deal. I've had administrators come down on me and try to make me stop doing this stuff. I don't. I just don't. I, I make my calls I, every single time. This is insanity. The fact that nobody, not the counselors, the vice principal, the principal, the school aides, anyone there could have stopped this. This is a failure not only on a systemic level, but is an incredible indictment against this school. Everyone there, as I said before, should have some sort of ever some sort of uh, dent to their licensure. And not to mention, I'm just going to say it. I don't. Th I think the parents literally are should be looked at as accomplice. Accomplish it. Accomplice is leaving a gun out like that and knowing how bad your kid is. You're basically just saying, "Do this." This is awful. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, at this point, like, and we've covered a lot of it. It's really rough stuff. If there's any changes in this or new information comes to light, we'll try to cover it. But at this point, I feel like, yeah, this is levels of criminal neg negligence. And if it's not criminal, at least these people should take massive debts to their, to their licensure. That's, that's my honest take. Yeah, at the very least. The parents were charged with manslaughter. Fucking good. All right, yeah, folks. Were, yeah. I'm sorry we had to get through this really hard one, but uh, thought you guys should know. Um, yeah, you can be both pro-gun and also want more gun control. Weird, huh? And also, like, actually want requirements for safety precautions. For example. So. All right, folks. We'll see you in the next one. Yep. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below, or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for watching.